So today we will look at the details on scour under marine structures. The layout of uh, what we are going to discuss in the class, I will get started with uh, the introduction, move on to mechanics, mechanics uh, of uh, scour. In general I will cover the scour due to flow that is due to currents followed by scour under around the piles due to the propagation of waves then later due to the combination of currents and waves. Then this will be followed by protection measures some of the suggested protection measure which we have already which have been already implemented. Then uh, there will be some uh, references from which some of this material has been taken. So this is uh, a kind of uh, the kind of uh, organization of the lecture on scour. Let us see what is cover. It clearly says that localized erosion of seabed due to waves and or current action. Scour occurs where the sediments is eroded. I mean the bed of sediments is eroded from an area in response to the forcing of forcing due to waves and currents. The term scour is used instead of the general term erosion to distinguish the process caused by the presence of a structure. So we should clearly distinguish between what is cover and cover and erosion. Erosion can happen without any obstruction. For example, a seabed is there, uh, 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 I mean uh, the beach slope is there. During a storm, the entire beach can get eroded. That is an instant kind of erosion or a continuous uh, propagation of waves over the beach can slowly and gradually it will be removing the sand. So there is there may not be any cause for this erosion except that the waves are hitting the coast and the coast is the beach is being removed the beach material is being removed. So this basically depends on the forces from the waves and also the sediment character 6. This we have clearly seen under the coastal erosion and protection lecture. Now scour is different, scour takes place certainly when there is an obstruction. Simple example is you go to the beach, stand on the beach, water comes and then when it is when the downwash is happening initially you have the wave run up which will pass your feet and then when it is getting back you see that the some amount of sand is removed from the toe from your toes or from your feet so from the toe near the toe the depth of the hole that is being created will be slightly higher so this is a classical example for knowing the physics of scour. So that clearly indicates that it has something to do with the size of the obstruction and also the characteristics of the flow and the characteristics of sediments. So Remember that scour takes place when there is an obstruction 
what are all the locations where you can usually have cover? You see bridges, piers. If you happen to cross, if you happen to see the bridge piers, when uh, there is uh, not much of flow in the river, you can easily see that around the piers, pier near the near it is uh, where it is touching the uh, bed, the river bed, you will see the dumping of stones. This is called as in general they call it as riprap protection for cover. Then near the dams, near the toe of the spillway, there you will have protection. So, all these things some way or other it is meant to take care of cover because of the velocity gradient that is going to remove the material. Is that clear? So, now cover occurs due to interaction between a fluid flow field and obstruction to this whole flow and sediment bed. This is what I have just explained. The main feature which is responsible for the cover formation is the generation of secondary flow. So, later we will see what is meant by primary flow and secondary flow. The primary flow is the normal flow and the secondary flow is caused because of the flow as well as the flow due to obstruction. That is flow which is incident on the structure and due to some kind of a flow due to the presence of the structure. These two kinds of these two flow interact causing a kind of a secondary flow. Now, why is cover important? Cover is threat to stability of structure, determining the depth of foundation. Now, here you see a sea wall and under the normal circumstances what happens and you can have you will expect the structure near its toe is likely to experience likely likely to experience cover and this is where you are supposed to take care as passing remarks we have i have already indicated whenever you have structures you will have to protect the toe of the structure be it a wall or a pile etcetera. So, if you do not give this what will happen you have the same you will have the depth of the cover taking place. Depth of the cover takes place because in the case of let us examine in the case of a vertical wall. If the wall is not there, the still water line will be somewhere here, the mean sea level. But when the wall is there, then the still water level itself will go up by a certain magnitude, <laughs> which I have discussed when I spoke about wave forces on wall type structures. When the depth increases naturally because of uh, this uh, vertical wall, you have the reflection reflected waves. So, you have the reflected waves, the wave height will be double the wave height of the incident wave, you know that. When the wave height is large, naturally particle velocities near the structure is going to be large. So, the difference in the velocity is going to be felt all through 
depending on the magnitude of the incident wave characteristics, you are going to have a scour taking place. If you do not, so the, it, it is a primary requirement that this is not allowed. So, in order to make sure that this is not allowed, the flow field has to be dissipated. So, you have a hard mattress, you prepare something like a hard mattress in the form of a, maybe gabions or natural stones, preferably with over a, a slope, so that the flow field gets diverted and it does not create a create the scour. So, this is a, an essential requirement that is cover of protection for structures. Now, another example, for example, I cons we have a, we are supposed to construct a jetty. And this jetty, uh, this is in plan. So, this will be let us let us say that it is supported on piles. Okay. How deep? the piles have to go beneath the seabed. That is very important. For example, this is constructed along a river, you say, say it is constructed along a river. What are the informations you need? Basically, this cover hole or this cover depth scour depth will be a function of water depth for sure, apart from the other info, uh, uh, forcing variables. So, for the water depths which we are talking about and for the in inflow discharge characters velocity etcetera, you need to know what is the approximate, I mean what is the kind of cover depth you can anticipate. In coastal waters some, some uh, they use uh, twice the water depth can be treated as the scour depth. Whatever may be, if this cover depth below the seabed, for example, you estimate as 10 meters or maybe 20 meters or 10 meters or 5 meters, whatever it may be, for sure your pile has to extend the cover depth, preferable. And also, you need to have the cover protection. Just imagine you are constructing a structure and your pile has not gone, this is only 10 meters for example, this is only a, an example and we have not given any, no cover protection is given, the structure has been constructed. What would happen when there is a scour hole? Later you will see that the scour hole is maximum in the vicinity of the pile. And this is the pile. Now, this much of sand is removed.
this is your pile what will happen the pile will be suspended because the sand around the pile has been removed due to local cover this is called as local cover once this is removed one pile still the structure may be able to withstand suppose if you have the row of piles then you will see that the entire thing will collapse and then the cover is the flow will get diverted and then some of the piles the intermittent fire piles also can be removed and slowly the entire structure can go into the river so now you see the importance of understanding this cover phenomena and also looking at the possibilities of protecting the structure against cover problems is there any question is it okay you are all right you understood so look at this animation of whatever i was uh, i had discussed you have a structure and you have a flow taking place and hitting the beach initially so after hitting the obstruction the flow is getting back and when the flow is getting back it will pick up the sediments and remove it towards the ocean that is in the event that you don't have any cover protection if there is a cover protection this uh, down flow will not be removing any sand because you have a, an obstruction uh, you have a protection measure there so waves are reflected back from the sea wall pulling the sand out to the sea this is what i had been explaining so now wave cover undercuts the sea wall so earlier you saw the level of the sea bed somewhere here as time progresses you see the level of your sea bed in the vicinity of the wall that is because of the undercutting the sea wall by the waves and still you don't take any proper measure in protecting it the process of cover will continue so erosion of or the cover of the sand will take place then until it has removed even the founding level of it has the founding level of the structure is now seen here so when it goes below the founding level the wall becomes the structure becomes unstable and then the sea wall is likely to collapse so there earlier i explained with an example of a pile the pile will start hanging here if it is a structure the whole structure can collapse the whole structure may not be collapsing may be at parts a location wherever you have a, a, this type of instability it there is a possibility that the wall itself can disappear completely so that explains uh, to some extent the importance of cover of knowing what is cover now when you look at the categories of cover we have bro broadly five different categories although we have five different categories we may not be using all the five and the most frequently used categories are the general cover and the local cover so general cover 
depends primarily on the sediment movement at the location and may vary considerably from location to location occurs irrespective of the existence of the structure. Please do not confuse, uh, get, do not get confused between this general cover and erosion. Erosion is something different. This general cover is when you, when the flow is taking place, there can be even seabed ripples that is being formed. Seabed is always not smooth as you may think. So, there may be some uh, locations, local locations where there can be a general kind of uh, movement of sand depending, uh, I mean uh, removal of sand and then uh, the seabed can have some kind of a depression. And this of course, depends, uh, it varies from location to location. Local cover, typically due to the presence of structures and especially piles or gravity type foundations. It basically occurs due to the local obstruction to the flow. Wherever you have large obstructions, you can have large or small obstructions, you can still, you will still have, you will have scour and this is called as local scour that is in the vicinity of the structure itself. Then global or dishpan cover. These are shallow wide depressions under and around individual installations. These are very shallow but wide depressions. Okay. Then constriction cover that occurs due to the flow being narrowed, not very common. Then overall seabed movement that is erosion deposition or bed form movement. See the overall set movement and the general cover more or less fall under similar kind of categories. So, this picture clearly illustrates that has been presented in the offshore technology conference in 18 and uh, 1982 by Angus and Moore. This is an excellent photograph showing and giving an explanation for the difference between general cover and the local cover. General cover, all this thing is called as general cover. Local cover are the ones which are occurring just in the vicinity of the obstruction that is in this case it is a pile. This is a typical formation of general cover and local cover in the presence of an offshore structure. So, again pictorially it can be represented as you look at the general cover here. This is the general cover which we have seen with the earlier photograph and you see that the local cover can be something like 1, 2, 2 times the diameter. These are all only empirical, I mean uh, thumb rules. So, now we move on to cover due to steady current. The scour mechanism is uh, the same whether it is a uh, steady current or waves or combination of current and waves. The basic physics remains same. It is only the magnitude of all the flow field that occur in the vicinity of the structure which dictates the intensity or the magnitude of this cover hole or and also the extent of this cover. 
So, the physics contains of flow separation, formation of leave wake vortices, formation of horseshoe vortex, then streamline con con uh, contraction and then local acceleration. What exactly happens is when you have a, a, a flow taking place in the direction uh, uh, as shown here and you have a presence of a structure, we take a, a pile, it is obvious that the flow separation will take place. The on the lee side the wake vortices will be formed, the strength of which depends on the characteristics of the flow as well as the dimension of the structure. The streamlines here would contract. There is a kind of horseshoe vortex which is formed here as you see here. In addition, there will be local acceleration because of the obstruction to the flow and there is a large pressure gradient here which is going to create a flow taking place from this location or approximately this location towards the direction of flow field towards the direction of flow. So, you have a main direction here and because of the obstruction you have a kind of a return flow. So, these two flow fields start interacting with each other and you know that this flow and this flow both are in opposite direction and that is going to create what is this again and that is going to enhance the shear stresses at the seabed. When the shear stresses exceed a certain limit that is when it has sufficient sufficient uh, sufficient driving force it will remove the sand and it will transport. So, in addition there is a pressure gradient also along the cylinder or a pile. So, which is going to create a scour hole in the vicinity of the structure and then you also have a scour, this scour will be propagating as shown here. This is the depth up to which this scour hole goes is called as local scour depth, whereas the other aspects we also use what is meant by general scour depth. So, this local scour depth is extremely important for the design of the structures. So, the aim of the engineers who are working in the design, they calculate the local scour depth based on a number of empirical formulas and this depth is utilized in order to fix the bottom of the piles, founding level of the piles. Is that clear? So, if you want to have a further explanation on this, it is not so easy, it is a bit complicated. You need to refer to a number of books which are given under the reference. Is that clear? I will also show you a, a, a animation. So, scour mechanism, what I have covered, I am just putting it here. Interaction between the fluid flow and the structure. Seabed boundary layers sets up pressure gradient on the upstream face of the cylinder. A recalculating ending eddy primary vortex forms around the pile. Depending on the intensity of the pressure field, three dimensional separation of boundary layer occurs and this is in the form of a horseshoe vortex. 
the vortex system is formed on the lee side of the pile and which is called as wake vortex. The above phenomena increases the shear stress on the bed surface and this will cause the dislocation of the soil grains. So, the shear stresses as well as the grain size is extremely important. So, even if the shear stresses exceed and if you are now protected it with the huge rocks, this is not going to lift the rock, so small stones, it is going to be in its position. But there are situations where scour can go so deep, so you need to be very careful. I would like to recollect, uh, recollect one thing. In the case of breakwaters, in my lecture on breakwaters, you have I have explained about exposed toe and excavated toe. Remember? So you excavate some material and approximate uh, 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 thumb rule is one meter di deep and the toe width is approximately 3 meters. Either you have it like this or you have a or you have an exposed toe, this is an exposed toe and whereas you can also think of an ex excavated toe. If you do not have this now, you leave it as it is, it is a large obstruction to the waves. So, what will happen? The pressure gradient etcetera, all this will take place, the sand will be removed. So, now you see that this portion is almost like suspended. So, what will happen? You lose this portion and once you lose this portion, you will also lose this portion. The entire breakwater can go. So, now you have, uh, I have explained to you the example of a vertical wall, example of a vertical pile and an example of breakwater. So, all these places cover is cover protection is extremely is of paramount importance. So, R2 R2 water, I will just take uh, 2 minutes uh, on this, just 1 minute on this. In the upstream of a pile, the natural turbulent boundary layer undergoes a 3 dimensional separation and the lower regions of the separated boundary layer roll up to form a vortex system. This is what I am repeating. What I have told I am just repeating. Only thing is I did not mention it is three dimensional, but it is three dimensional. So, this vortex system move to downstream and assume the characteristics of the shape of a horseshoe and that is the reason why they call it as horseshoe vortex. Dimensions of the vortex system primarily depend on the diameter of the obstruction and their strength is a function of the pile shape as well as the flow velocity. Finally, bottom shear stress due to horseshoe vortex increased by a factor of up to 4 times over the bottom shear stress in an undisturbed approached undisturbed flow. So, these are all some of the important things. Now, let us uh, whatever I have explained, still if it is not clear, I suggest uh, read some books in order to familiarize yourself the basic mechanism. So, now you have an obstruction, now flow is taking place. Now, the flow reaches the obstruction. Now, you see the 
divergence of the flow field or the flow separation. So, that is what happens the flow separation takes place. Now, there is a flow towards the seabed also because of the gradient pressure gradient and when it goes down it generates also the in uh, the or to uh, the vortices and this is how it will uh, look like and this in combination with the return flow you will have the kind of horseshoe vortex that is being formed. The cover in the vicinity of the pile will be deeper. So, So now this is it another animation wherein you see a pile thanks to Sumer, Fredzo, all these people who have provided this information. They are all from Denmark and this animation was published in 2000. This is an excellent animation which shows the basic phenomena of scour. The top one shows the graphical, the graphical, the animation how it takes place. This is only the flow field which you are seeing, flow is taking place. Then now here is the, here is a seabed level contours, how the seabed contours are changing. Now, this is the bed level at the edge of the domain. For example, here you see that there are some uh, the flow taking place. Now, you see that what is happening here, the bed level, level, so slowly you see the depression taking place. And this shows the bed stress amplification, when it is greater than 1, you will have the the ratio between the shear stress and the critical shear stress, you will have the scour taking place and this is uh, the, the different colors shows the magnitude of the ratio of the shear stresses that is the relative shear stress I would call it. So, this shows that the scour is taking place on a continuous basis in the vicinity of the structure. Is that clear? So, when does scour occur? Scour will occur if the shear strength of the soil is less than the shear stress induced by flowing fluid. So, hydrodynamic that is hydrodynamic bottom shear stresses is greater than the sediment critical shear stress. So, when the hydrodynamic shear stress is greater, it will remove the sand from, a, from the bed and it will transport. Is that clear? Now, where does uh, scour occur? We had seen earlier here and there that is we saw a typical example of a wall, pile, breakwater, etcetera. But in a a coastal environment. In general, let us examine what are all the locations where you can anticipate scour. For example, you have a bridge here and you have a an estuary. Usually, you have blockage of the mouth sandbar formation for which you going for training walls. Maybe here you have a, a bulkhead in order to retain this sand, uh, uh, retain this earth and you see that there is a, a bridge also here. Bridge has piers or supported on piles or piers. So, this is going to be an active zone of scour 
bulkhead is there at its toe you can anticipate uh, scour and also this uh, location is the uh, location where the velocity is, is expected to be higher. So, you can anticipate more scour here near the tip of the wall. In fact, all along the wall you can anticipate erosion, but this also illustrates one aspect that if the sand is in this direction, the littoral drift is in this direction, you have an advancement of the shoreline and hence there may not be any scour here, but scour can be anticipated at the near the head of the training wall. On this side you can anticipate because it is a there is not much of deposition taking place both the ends of this uh, training wall. You can anticipate erosion because of the flow taking place here and the flow and due to the wave action on this side you can have a, this is the flow due to waves uh, uh, due to uh, the river flow as well as due to the uh, tidal ingress. If you for example, if you have a pipeline for drawing sea water for, for various purpose you can have a, you might experience the pipeline may have a, a, a scour taking place or if the pipeline in this deeper waters you can have a pipe a, a scour. How do we protect all these things? I will just give some basic uh, informations and uh, suppose if you have a, 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 a structure offshore bridge or offshore structure you can have a you will a, these structures will experience a scour. The sea wall connected along the shore can have scour, detached breakwater can have scour and uh, not only that during uh, the ingress of uh, uh, the tsunami a number of buildings collapsed because of the return flow. You know what is the order of velocity we were uh, we, we uh, what with what order of velocity the tsunami approached the coast. So much of uh, uh, water uh, went inside the land, and when it uh, it has to return back, it returned with a greater velocity. When it returns with a greater velocity, what happens? It feels the obstructions like your buildings, coconut trees, okay, all kinds of obstructions. Wherever there are free obstructions, small house, it obstruction. So, you will have this cover hole taking place. Unfortunately, the if the foundation of the house is not so taken deeper, the cover hole can lead to has led to instability of the wall, instability of the building and the building has collapsed. So many trees fell down. These are all because of cover only. Is that clear? So this is a cover under sea wall, a common problem. This is basically due to the propagation of waves, as striking the sub uh, structure. So initially, what will happen is. When you have an obstruction, the sand will be removed here. Where will be the sand removed and where will it go? It will go and create a kind of sandbar. You understood? And this sandbar may be a bit dynamic, it depends on the location, but this sandbar itself can form as another obstruction. And that obstruction itself can create erosion. And when this sand is removed, that will form another small hump in its on its seaside. So you can have alternate dips. Okay, and this varies from location to location. But this is a kind of a general phenomena, which can which is likely to take place. Is that clear? Now, scour under offshore structures due to waves. Waves will cause oscillatory flow 
in which the fluid particle will not travel great distance thereby substantial boundary layer will not be developed. Because it is oscillatory flow, whatever transport is taking place, it is likely to be only due to the mass transport velocity. Otherwise, it is only a, an orbital velocity movement. So, in which case the vortex will be smaller and weaker than that produced by a steady current. Therefore, cover produced will also be smaller. But you may, you can anticipate ripples on the seabed. So this ripple formation can be with or without structure. With the structure, in the presence of structure, the cover will be more. But otherwise, you can have the ripples on the seabed. The same phenomena will hold good. Sediments cover caused by acceleration of the primary flow past the structure, uh, structure as well as small and large scale flow patterns in the wake. The similar kind of uh, vortices will be generated. The same phenomena of shear stresses, hydrodynamic shear stresses exceeding the seabed stresses which will remove the sand particles for a complete detail of this you may look at the reference given here so he has discussed the details of cover under waves cover under structures due to waves and currents The shape of cover hole produced by combined effects of waves and currents is similar to the shape that is developed due to steady currents without waves. An increased velocity due to waves and currents, this again depends on the directions. Direction in which the wave is moving along with the current. You can have different scenario, wave moving in this direction, current moving in this direction or there can be an oblique angle or both can move in the same direction. For the details of this, please refer to the lecture material on wave deformation. An increased velocity due to both waves and currents the secondary flow will be stronger due to increased magnitude of the velocity hence the stronger hence the stronger the secondary flow along with the stronger or to or shoe vortex system so if you have the secondary flow secondary flow in fact is one of the most important thing because of the pressure gradient there is a secondary flow there is a return flow which is going to be superposed or which is going to be driven by the primary flow. So, that is the, the, that kind of situation only is responsible for the creation of the horseshoe water system. So, now the strength of the horseshoe water system, system will depend on the characteristics of the flow which is going to be altered depending on whether only current is moving or only wave is moving or waves superposed on a current and if so, is it in the same direction or is it in the opposite direction or with a oblique angle. All these uh, 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 conditions or criteria will, will govern the strength and the or the intensity of the cover. I mean the intensity of the local cover as well as the general cover that takes place in the near a, a offshore structure. Is that clear? So, I will stop here. So, now 
we just now uh, we move on to the geotechnical considerations when we are addressing uh, the problem related to cover under marine structures. The type of soil uh, supporting a coastal foundation governs this cover protection cover, cover or erosion uh, potential and the long term behavior of uh, of the foundation of that particular structure. Loose granular soils are rapidly eroded under the movement of water flow of water while cohesive or cemented soils are more cover resistant as we all know. So that is one of the reason why we use uh, natural rocks as scour protection. Sandy soils will be eroded earlier not only earlier it will be eroded in uh, more rapidly also compared to the other types of uh, soil like bedrock etcetera. So sandy soil sandy beaches when you want to develop in case you want to develop some uh, uh, promote some kind of uh, infra infrastructural facilities on a sandy beach then you better be watch out on the watch out for this cover. Again uh, there is a difference of cover and erosion, cover is a kind of a local phenomena more intensive with respect to the local near the obstruction, but erosion can be felt over long distances. Next soil properties, so properties of soil, uh, I mean sand, uh, sediments which are very important in, uh, uh, in the phenomena of a scour as cover is governed these are the characteristics of uh, the sediments which control or govern the extent of cover. So namely the particle size, particle shape, sediment concentration, fall velocity, specific weight of uh, uh, particles as well as grain size distribution. Apart from a few other characteristics if you want to have a uh, uh, detailed information on this you can go to my lecture on sediment characteristics wherein we have discussed most of the aspects and uh, some additional uh, factors also or you can refer to a number of uh, references books given at the end of the lecture. The threshold of movement that is where your uh, hydrodynamic shear stresses exceed the seabed shear stresses that is going to depend naturally on the particle size, the density, shape, packing, orientation of the seabed material all these factors they control the threshold movement that is the initiation of sediment motion. Under ways we have worked out a few problems also on initiation of sediment motion. So look at the informations that have been discussed under the chapter on initiation of sediment motion. Soil types occurring affecting scour. The percentage of soil types with scour problems are listed below. It is seen that the sand foundations have 48 percent of uh, scour problems while silt foundations do not display any scour problem. So percentage is given on the right hand side and the sediment size is given on the left hand side. So sand has the maximum percentage. All these informations are available in the list of uh, references that are given at the end of the lecture material. <coughs> Soil types affecting cover depth, the intensity and duration of current will affect the rate of cover in the seabed. 
The following table uh, represents the duration of maximum scour depths in uh, different uh, soil conditions. Some of the scour depth which are used are local scour depth, ultimate scour depth. The ultimate scour depth is the depth beyond which which is almost like steady state once you reach. So, some of these informations can be had from a number of references. I am not going to discuss about all those details. Duration for maximum scour depth in different soils are given here sand and gravel bed materials in hours, cohesive bed in days, glacial tills, poor cemented sandstone in months, hard dense well cemented sandstones in years and granites in centuries. Now, scour depth depends on the following parameters, diameter of the sediment size, I mean the grain size or the diameter of the sediment, diameter of the obstruction that is in this case we are considering a pile, hydraulic gradient I, D is the water depth, U is the mean velocity of the undisturbed flow and u star is critical velocity given as this expression g into d naught into i square root of this product as mentioned by Bruce et al in 1977. So, the critical velocity is represented as a form of the water depth as a function of water depth and the hydraulic gradient. The hydraulic gradient is going to be the driving force. Now, let us look into the scour due to currents. Most of the most of the empirical relationships that are available in literature as are based on experimental work. The experimental work, I mean in the laboratory is not so easy, because modeling the sediment is not so easy. You can easily model the flow, but modeling the sediment is a bit tricky and it is not so easy. This is an equation or a relationship available for the prediction of scour depth as given here S p is the scour depth, d p is the diameter of the pile. Now, this is given as a function of relative water depth h by d p and the fraud number and the fraud number at the incipiation uh, at the incipient uh, motion which is governed by this is the undisturbed velocity with for which uh, you calculate your fraud number and the other one is based on the flow uh, flow field at the incipient uh, motion So, once you are able to calculate the all these variables if it is available to you, you can estimate, I would use rather estimate because all these things are derived from experiments and it is a an empirical formula. Then sediment uh, scour depth in cohesive soils under currents. So, this is the uh, relationship as given here. This alpha c is the product of these uh, numbers and all these things are u is the velocity, d is the water depth and uh, d is the capital D p is the uh, pile diameter, then tau c is the critical shear stress and uh, all these uh, variables are given to us. So, based on this you can estimate the scour depth under cohesive soils. Scour under piles caused by wave action. This is uh, basically a function of Culligan Carpenter number. 
Cooligan Carpenter number is U max T by D. So this equation is uh, quite straightforward, but it is valid only for Kc number greater than six. Cover under piles due to combined action of currents and waves. So you have a, a beta parameter coming here, which is uh, controlled by this factor, where U p is Husserl's parameter. This is fruit number. This is Reynolds number. This is wave steepness. Once you are able to calculate this, then use this relationship to get the cover depth. Now we having seen some of the basic uh, starting with the basic uh, uh, phenomena of scour, we saw what are all the problems associated with scour, the importance of scour. The consequence of scour, if you do not uh, uh, consider the scour protection, what will happen to the structure? Then we looked at the combination of environment as far as flow is connected. So, you can have a steady current or waves, combined waves and currents, etcetera. And finally, we came up with we looked at the formulas for current all these conditions different conditions. We also looked at the different uh, soil characteristics that are very important. I am sure that uh, this lecture should be a starting as a base for you to if you are interested in proceeding further in this area this can form as a base material and of course additional re, additional reading is very much essential in order to understand the <coughs> in order to really do some kind of research or uh, in the case of a field application so now we will move on to scour protection measures as I said earlier is a very important aspect to be considered for the construction of any marine structure. Protection is chosen based on the type of structure and its importance, location of the structure, availability of material, what kind of materials are available and finally the most important is the cost criteria. We have a wide range of products that could be thought of, but a careful planning is needed. Broad classification of protection measures, the scour protection methods can broad, broadly be, be classified as rock fill method, riprap method and protective mattress. Cover protection measures. The measures can be actually the details we have. I have presented the details here. It can be either protective apron, like the apron near the toe of the dam, rock dumping for bed stabilization, mattress. This mattress can be geosynthetic mattress. Look at uh, some of the uh, look at the lecture on geosynthetic uh, materials, uh, application of geosynthetics in coastal engineering. That will give some uh, information about the protection, cover protection. Then trenching, this particularly is very important in the case of uh, pipelines, or and even in the case of uh, I would say even in the case of uh, uh, breakwaters, if you have excavated toe you need to have a kind of a trench wherein you can place your toe 
although difficult it is extremely uh, effective. Then sandbags are grout filled bags, this is the most commonly adopted. It depends on the environment, for example, if you have a, a, a location where you have a lot of sharp corners, sandbags is not a, a recommended uh, procedure. Anchoring of stops and soil anchors, flow energy reduction device including artificial seaweed. So, now there are some geosynthetic products where you can have a seaweed growing. So, this is uh, uh, th this can result in a rich flora and fauna also. There are options, but naturally when you want to have more benefits, the product is going to be costly. So, you have to decide what exactly you want. Soil improvement to increase soil bearing capacity and to reduce cover potential. These are all soil improvement studies, ground improvement techniques. So, there are a variety of problems uh, and methods also. So, you have on the top the types of structures, this I have taken from uh, Richard Whitehouse from his book Scavara on marine structures, around marine structures, piles, pipelines, large volume structures, sea walls, breakwaters, jacob breaks. These are the variety of structures that are in existence in the marine environment in the ocean or in the coastal zone. So, on this uh, column you have uh, the type of uh, uh, the method for protection, protective apron for piles, large volume structures, sea walls and breakwaters, rock dumping can be used for all, but of course the size of uh, the rock will be varying. Then uh, mattress can be for pipelines. In fact, uh, mattress is widely used for uh, uh, pipeline, pipelines widely used and in fact, we had a, a very nice uh, uh, experience of lowering a pipeline in a water depth of 20 meters where the velocity of water was approximately 9 meters per second, 8 to, 8 to 10 meters per second. This is somewhere in uh, Gujarat, along Gujarat. So, you can imagine with this kind of a, a speed, the pipeline is resting on the bed and we need to have a protection for the pipe. So, we looked at several op uh, uh, I mean uh, options and finally, we went in for this mattress. Unfortunately, I do not have uh, any pictures on this. So, what, what was the main problem is not even the anchoring. The main problem was dropping it and making it uh, keeping it in position because of the huge velocity involved. So, this has been completed and the pipeline is in its position without any problem for at least now maybe about the between 5 to 10 years. So, then sandbags there are several cases, uh, in fact it is also used in the case of uh, sea walls and breakwaters also, although it is not marked here flow reduction in all the cases we have, then soil improvement scheme mostly piles, large volume, sea walls etcetera. So, you see that there is a, a pile structure here, how, we, how it has been protected, you see that this is the kind of protection. So, the width a height all these things need to be calculated or you can have a, a stone, stone revetment in order to provide uh, uh, prevent the slope uh, 
uh, erosion or slows the cover around this and you can also have vegetation here which is strongly recommended. This is uh, for the case of a, a pipeline you have a kind of a mattress. This is a application of geo bags offshore wind plants, wind energy plants which is gaining a tremendous uh, importance these days. So, when you operate, when you go in for wind farm, this is one important area where we need lot of uh, information, cover protection forms a basic uh, necessity. Then this is in case of a, a pipeline, this is only a, a partial protection, you have you protect only this portion. probably in deeper waters, because if this kind of a situation exists in shallower waters, the ship anchors etcetera might hit by chance. So, in case of a, mostly this kind of a situation, this kind of a protection is a, a considered, the whole pipe is covered. Protective mattress as I have said earlier, this is a free prefabricated mattress used where less control over a rock dumping, they are flexible and follow local bed contour. So, that those are the advantages. So, a synthetic it is also fascine, this is another product which was uh, which has been mentioned in uh, Herbish et al. So, filter by fabric strengthened with geosynthetic natural, this is nothing but your natural, uh, your geosynthetic material and you have a strengthening, so that it is very flexible, you can cover it and uh, use it for. So, this is another uh, block mattress, a continuous array of concrete block held together by cable and then it is uh, laid over the concrete block. See for example, you look at this this is to take care of end discover. So, this is vertical walled uh, uh, structures, sea walls as I have told you, these are used by using gabions. See, scour and uh, uh, erosion, they are together in fact, there is a slight uh, difference, but the effect is almost same, effect is loss of material. So, with this I will conclude and I would suggest like to list the books, all this, all this references have provided some useful information on cover under marine structures and these are all some of the references that I have used in preparation of this lecture and there might be some others also which I might have missed.